Hey everyone, Thornton here, and it turns out us Helldivers have been abused and tricked by an unsuspecting enemy who we thought was actually on our side. Today we're going to go over some of the funny hijinks that have been happening behind the scenes with Arrowhead, and also, what other content are we looking forward to in the near future? But without further ado, let's jump into today's topic. In the chaotic theater of war that has been defining Helldivers 2 for the last couple of months, the ongoing major order to liberate Tibet has become a battleground not just against the relentless automatons, but also ourselves, because like we are gamers and we just don't ever seem to agree. And the recent setback suffered by High Command has ignited a flurry of blame and analysis, and it highlights a lot of the challenges faced by players in their quest for glass supremacy. I don't know if anyone watched Twitch plays Pokemon, but sometimes with the giant war map and what's going on and where players are going, it reminds me of that. There are some players who are like, we are gonna do the major orders and defend Super Earth, and other players are like, I'm gonna go shoot some bugs, you do you. The narrative right now that's unfolding is a tale of strategic missteps and conflicting priorities. Because there was a choice between defending Dropner and liberating Ubina, and the dilemma faced by commanders and soldiers alike. Whether we're gonna consolidate our current gains or push forward into new territories. And unfortunately, the loss of Ubina at 95% liberation stands as a testament to the delicate balance required in allocating forces and picking the right mission type. Just kidding, go ahead, it's a video game, do what you want. And now, it was pretty funny because High Command did rebuke, and it was actually pretty harsh, but I mean, that's part of the fun of this game. And it echoes the fundamental principle of earning victories through concerted effort and focused determination. The blame game extends beyond tactical diversions. The blame game extends beyond tactical decisions to encompass broader player dynamics, including the perennial conflict between bug divers and bot divers. And if you're a bot diver, I don't respect you. I'm just kidding. I just, the bugs are so much more fun. As well as the allure of Malevolent Creek, though, I will say that. I wish the bugs were on that planet. That would be so much fun. I don't know. It's just like the robots sometimes. I, I just... With all this going on, the discord within the player base is actually seeing something about the revelation of a fake Joel. In case you guys don't know that, Joel is the game master. He chooses where we go, why we kill things, and you know, basically he is our president of social media or whatever it is. Anyways, there is a fake version of him, which is a viral hacker who gives players unreleased vehicles and shortcuts through the grind. And there's the intertwining of in-game challenges with real-world temptations, and it's actually kind of an interesting psychological e experiment for gaming communities in general. There's a lot of cheaters in PvP games, but it is interesting to see people boosting in a PvE game. And it kind of makes sense where the allure of progress often clashes with the satisfaction of the earned achievement. Now, I've never really been in the whole boosting and paying to get further in the game thing, but I will say I do kind of understand that if you work like a typical 9-to-5 job, hopping on and going ahead and getting boosted through cheats to get a high level in this game isn't the worst thing in the world. You're not actually harming anyone. Now, if you were using these cheats to ruin players' time, well, you might have a case there. But Arrowhead has acknowledged some of the issues that are going on with this because it is a delicate ecosystem of player motivations and also the engagement. There's always going to be the allure of shortcuts and exploits exemplified by Steve and his boosting endeavors. But it raised questions about the balance between fair play and individual ambition. I will say though, from what one article said, there's a lot of cool shit in the files that he actually showed off and I am really excited excited to see that come to the game, and I've never really been against seeing early content, so I guess I'm okay with that aspect of it. Overall, Helldivers' ongoing major order is an absolutely fantastic showcase, not just the struggle against robotic flows, but a reflection of human nature, because this really does showcase how we react and how we play games, and how sometimes we'll go ahead and listen to what our boss says, but other times we're like, nah, I'm gonna go kill bugs. Yes, I am gonna go back to that. And the quest for Tibet symbolizes more than a strategic objective. It talks about the harsh overrolling China. Wait, sorry, different video. Uh, it embodies the collective aspirations and challenges of a diverse player base navigating the intricacies of virtual warfare. It will be interesting to see what other content Helldiver Sue continues to give us, what kind of new orders are released, and if we actually follow them, or if we're doing a horrible, horrible job of defending Super Earth, in which case we don't get any of the cool stuff fake Joel is even showing us, which would be a huge disappointment. Comment down below, do you think that the cheaters and what they're doing is actually that big of a deal, or do you mostly find it funny? Because personally, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Also, if you're looking for more news on other video games, don't forget to check out my other videos right here. And until next time, everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.